in a shocking turn of events it's Sunday and you might not be able to tell but I have brushed my hair it's quite windy and I'm dressed which for Sunday is totally not me but it can only mean one thing it's Wonderwall! <laughs> Hello, welcome or welcome back to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all the places you can find me should be linked in the description box below this video. Here on the channel you'll find me chatting about my adventures in knitting, spinning, crochet and weaving, all of the fibre related things. Today's video is my rather paltry, <laughs> teeny tiny little Wonderwall vlog and as you've been able to tell from my rather enthusiastic introduction, <laughs> I had grand plans of taking lots of footage and recording everything that I was seeing and up to on my day out at the lovely Wonderwall Festival. However, the time just passed by in an absolute whirlwind. It was a complete blur from start to finish. I was able to meet some wonderful people on the day and we were whizzing around trying to get to see all of the wonderful stands, all of the vendors, to admire some of the fabulous little sheep and bunnies and all of the things <laughs> that come with being at the wonderful at the Wonderwall Festival. But really I didn't get too much of an opportunity to take much footage at all. So I sort of um denied about whether to put this vlog up, make it a separate vlog or just tag it on to the end of one of my other videos. However, a few people have actually reached out to me and said, hey, are you doing a wonderful vlog? So I figured I would put together what I have and um, although it might be short but sweet, hopefully it might give you a little taste of what the Wonderwall Festival is like if you've never been before. In this little vlog, I will share with you all of the footage that I took at the show itself and then I shall come back at the end and share with you some of the things that I purchased. So let's get on with the actual wonderful footage shall we? I want to say a big thank you to my lovely friend Lisa who so kindly chauffeured me to the show. It's such a lovely drive from here in South Wales to Bilth Wells where the show is held at the um, agricultural showground there. Just under a two hour drive I think from here and we were chatting all the way and so apologies to Lisa thank and thank you for putting up with all of my babble on the day. <laughs> it was an absolutely glorious sunshiny day but uh, it was quite windy when we first arrived at the showground too as you might have been able to tell from my intro my hair was blowing all over the place. <laughs> but uh, we spent most of the day inside perusing the stands and meeting lovely people and chatting and just having a nice day. Almost as soon as we'd walked through the doors, we bumped into some wonderful friends, um, Hannah, Angie and Fee, and that kind of set the tone for the rest of the day. So we had a little chat with them, we had some hugs. It just felt really joyful to be back at an in-person show after everything that's happened in the last couple of years. Yeah, as I say, that kind of set the tone for the visit really. There was lots of um, wandering around trying to look at the stands interrupted by meeting the most amazing people along the way. So I'm going to shut up for a little bit and share with you the rest of the footage that I took as I was wandering around the show and again please forgive me because it really isn't much but um, hopefully it gives you a little taste of the fabulousness that is Wonderwall.
so yeah, a little glimpse at some of the things that you would see if you were visiting Wonderwall. Um, if you want a little bit more, then the lovely Zoe of Pins and Needles has not one, but three vlogs up on her channel. Um, where she shared her experience of vending at the show with her lovely friend Jenny of Owl About Yarn and together they are Cartrev Yarn and also the Knit Tea Retreat and also the lovely Martin of Knit365 was helping out as a volunteer with Ammonite Yarn who are a local yarn shop uh, here in South Wales and Martin has a lovely behind the scenes vlog as well up on his channel. I'm sure many of you will have already seen those but if for any reason you don't follow Zoe or Martin then you can go and check out their channels and I'll link them below for a, a much better look <laughs> than I have provided here of Wonderwall. As I mentioned at the start it really felt like such a whirlwind day. Um, no sooner had we arrived than we were leaving and I felt like although we had spent hours wandering around looking at some of the lovely vendors uh, there were certainly some that we missed and there was definitely not enough time to spend chatting and spending time with friends. Uh, I got to meet some absolutely wonderful people um, from our community and I'm so so grateful to have had the opportunity to do that and I'm sure that I will miss some folks out so I don't know whether I should even attempt <laughs> to remember everyone that I stopped and chat, chatted to but I did take some photos with some people not with everyone so um, it was a real thrill for me to meet for the first time um, the lovely Angela and Andy of Attic Spin Die who have um, been lovely supporters of my channel in the past and I always have wonderful chats with Angela below in the comments here and also over on Instagram so it was a real joy to be able to meet them both and give Angela a big squish in person in a huge surprise and thrill to me, was able to meet in person the lovely Mars of Hay Brownberry. And I'm sure many of you will follow her channel here on YouTube. And if not, you should. <laughs> and I'll link um, Mars's channel in the comments below here as well. I have been following Mars since I think before she started her YouTube channel. Um, I somehow found her on Instagram. You know how these things happen when you join Instagram, you're looking at various hashtags and following different things. And I came across Mars and uh, we've chatted on and off over the years. We've even swapped a couple of packages um, between us. And I had no idea that she was here in the UK um, visiting the festival. And I was wandering around with Lisa, my friend, my lovely friend Lisa, and sort of grabbed Lisa and did a double take when I spotted Mar Mars by the John <laughs> John Arben stand. I just had to go over and give her a squeeze. That was a real highlight too. I got to meet the lovely Eleanor as well for the first time, um, I, which I didn't think was going to happen because Eleanor said she was going to be visiting on Saturday. But she also went back on the Sunday, which was amazing. Um, I, who else did I get to meet? Rachel, Sal, oh the lovely Anne of Spa Knits we got to do meet for the first time and I thought I was going to miss Anne because I've been wandering around all day trying to spot and our paths just did not cross. Um, however literally at the last minute I was as I was making my way um, through the halls to find Lisa and get back to the car to drive home um, I heard Anne shout Ange! <laughs> across the hall and uh, yeah I got to do squeeze Anne and meet Anne as well which was just an absolute delight. I got the best welcome to the show from um, the lovely Jenny, Ruth and Catherine. Um, I'd popped by the Cartrev yarn stand because I'd promised to take Jenny and Zoe some lunch <laughs> for the Sunday and I was dropping that off with Zoe and all of a sudden this big pile of people <laughs> came from behind me and just yeah bundled on top of me and it was just yeah it was just a real joy. <laughs> um, sadly I did not get to spend as I said earlier uh, as much time with some of my lovely friends as I would I, as I would have wished but and there were some people from our community who I'd hoped to bump into um, Anita, Tori, uh, Judy. Um, I didn't get to speak to Martin on the day because every time we went past the Ammonite yarn stand he'd disappeared off and yeah our paths just didn't cross so um, I'm sure there are many other folks as well that I'm just not remembering off the top of my head so <laughs> um, next year I would really like to go for two days I think if I can because um, that would allow for more time chatting spending time with friends and knitting I didn't even I didn't knit one stitch for the entire day can you believe it <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it was 
such a thrill to be back at an in-person show and I feel very lucky to have been able to attend. It was quite a strange experience though because obviously we haven't done anything like that for a couple of years so it was quite overwhelming um, as well as exciting to be around so many people. I was a little bit anxious about going because as I say we kind of got out of the ha habit of doing these things and so I had a little bit of a restless couple of days beforehand. Then I had such a brilliant day but I spent the whole evening being the socially awkward person that I can be sometimes, <laughs> worrying about whether I'd made a complete nitwit of myself <laughs> when I was chatting to um, any people, especially the folks I've met for the first time. So yeah, <laughs> brains eh, they're a little bit weird. <laughs> So Lisa and I had made a little plan to try not to purchase anything on our first sort of pass around the halls, they're kind of three all together, but to try and get a little bit of an idea as we wandered around as to for things that we might like to purchase, things that we might like to go back and see. And I broke that rule <laughs> as soon as I found the lovely Andy and Angela at Attic Spin Die. <laughs> so my first purchase was this beautiful skein. They only had one left. So I couldn't take a chance that I would come round for my second sort of pass around the show and it'd be gone. And it's um, their Scream 2020 colourway. And this just was calling my name as soon as I saw it hanging on the stand. It's a beautiful mix of orange, blue, and there's some sort of deep charcoal-y greys in here. Um, there's a sort of tinge of green, um, a few hints of purple. It's just got some beautiful, beautiful colours in and some gorgeous speckling. And yeah, I just knew that I couldn't take the chance that someone else would snap this up. So this came home with me. <laughs> Isn't that glorious? And Andy and Angela very kindly gifted me something, um, which I will share later. Yes, the Attic Spin Dice Gain is definitely in my head, sort of my Wonderwall 2022 souvenir skein. And I don't have any plans for what I'm going to do with it. And it will always be um, a sort of a reminder and a celebration of the fact that I finally got to meet um, those lovely folk in person. The only other yarn purchase, I know, right? <laughs> I was actually quite a good girl, which is probably down to the fact that I did so much chatting <laughs> rather than shopping, but not a bad thing. There's always next year for the shopping, right? <laughs> um, I can loosely pretend it's because I'm on this um, sort of de-stash kick, this journey to try and curate my stash to a more manageable level, but it really wasn't that. It was just because I ran out of time for shopping. <laughs> But anyway, I did manage to nab two skeins of yarn from the lovely uh, midwinter, midwinter yarns. And I've worked with their black and blue yarn before, which is a Welsh um, blue face Leicester and black blue face Leicester. And I came home with these two skeins. So this is the Potion colourway and this is the Welsh Mist colourway. And I wanted two skeins to enhance some stash that I already have to try and make a project. So I'm hoping to knit a pattern from this booklet, which is the Worsted publication from Lane, um, a collection curated by Amy Gillet of Le Bianna May. And I had fallen in love with the Azucena or Azucena, A-Z-U-C-E-N-A, -E and it's by Nadia Cretin Lachen. I'm sure I have completely butchered all of that, for which I apologise, but I'll put details on the screen. And it's this beautiful yoked jumper. And in my stash already, I had enough of this lovely scout yarn from Kelbourne Woolens um, in this beautiful charcoal, sort of deep, almost black colour. And so this is going to be my main body of the sweater and I need three colours for the yoke and in my stash somewhere but I have not been able to lay my hands on it I have a skein of Cartrev DK this is the Cartrev four ply but I have a skein of Cartrev DK in the Flam colourway this beautiful orange so I already have these in my stash so I wanted to just 
add to it and I thought it'd be quite nice um, with Kartra being a Welsh wool producer I thought it'd be quite nice to add in some midwinter yarns and make that yoke a sort of Welsh yoke <laughs> um, so that was my plan and so these are the colours that I'm going to be using for that sweater I have no idea when I'm going to have the time or opportunity to cast that on but it was something that I was on the lookout for um, to enhance the stash that I already had so I'm really happy to have purchased those and maybe if I don't get to it before it will feature in the 12 cast-ons at the end of the year we shall see and then of course I treated myself to a little bit of fibre as well because there were so many lovely fibre um, dyers and fibre producers at the show it would have been rude not to come home with a braid or two <laughs> But again I didn't go too crazy and I did come home with two braids so that's not too bad or at least two braids that I purchased myself. <laughs> um, so the first I picked up from the bargain bucket and this was entirely my lovely friend Jeanette's fault um, when we bumped into Jeanette. Jeanette had just been to the Hilltop Cloud stand and purchased some things out of their bargain bucket which were absolutely gorgeous and so uh, Lisa and I went by to check out the stand and I found this braid um, in again as I say in their sale bucket but it's this gorgeous uh, sort of grey base with greens and sort of a dark charcoal again pink um, it's just really 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 pretty so there was no way I was going to be able to resist that at the reduced price it's 50% Corydale, 25% Yak and 25% Rose Fibre so a really interesting blend and I don't think I have spun with Yak it feels terrifically soft and so yeah this is going to be a real joy to spin I think and then in contrast to these beautiful sort of muted tones I also picked up a braid of fibre from the lovely Almas who is witchcrafty lady and I was able to have a lovely chat with Almas at her stand I've met her a few times at Wonderwall now and she's always so lovely and this braid caught my eye and I just couldn't stop thinking about it so I had to go back and get it <laughs> I have to move back a bit so it doesn't blow out quite so much in the light but yeah this is a super wash pole worth with nylon so it'd be perfect again for socks and it's got these beautiful beautiful neon colors in there so you might be surprised to learn that is it for my purchases <laughs> can you believe it i did however get superbly spoilt by some lovely friends so although they were my only purchases i did come home with a few other things so let me share those with you too <clears throat> so i already mentioned back at the start what the first um group of people that we bumped into were um the lovely fee who is flourish fibers um and feltaria um, Angie Silver Goosegog and the lovely Hannah uh, crafty little rat and Fee was so so kind and generous and asked if I wanted to rehome a skein of her absolutely stunning hand spun art yarn and of course I was not going to turn this down um, she said that she thought I might be able to use it for weaving however I've got a real hankering to try and make a really fun cowl with this um, it's just oh, it's just gorgeous I'm not very good myself when it comes to spinning art yarn it's something that I'd like to practice a little bit more of but this is just oh, it's just superb and can't you just imagine all of those beautiful textures in a really fun fun um cowl I can I can see it in my head so I hope I have enough yarn to pull that off but look at this it's just ah oh, it's spectacular Fee you are super talented your spinning is glorious The textures in here just make me so so happy and you know that this beautiful sunshine and blue skies colour combination is always going to make my heart sing so thank you so so much V for that I cannot wait to get that on the needles. I also mentioned earlier that the lovely Andy and Angela were super generous and had given me a gift and <laughs> look at all this amazing whoops, <laughs> fibre wow it's just superb so um, Andy said that he'd dyed up some fibre and had tried to put it into some bats but he wasn't happy with how they turned out and uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong to my eye with these they're absolutely gorgeous gorgeous and so they brought some along to Wonderwall 
and asked if I wanted to rehome these. Um, hello. <laughs> yes, please. Um, there are some absolutely scrummy colourways in this bag. Gorgeous. And there's quite a lot of this amazing orange. And as soon as I got home on Wonderwall evening, I had to put some of that onto my e-spinner. My e-spinner happened to be free. And so I've already started spinning up that orange quantity beautiful. It's spinning up like a dream. So thank you so, so much um, to Andy and Angela for gifting me so much of their amazing dyed fibre. I also received one more amazing gift. Um, and this is from Anne, lovely Sparnitz, who has the No Excuses Knitting podcast here on YouTube. And Anne gifted me one of her project bags and it's this beautiful purple flower fabric uh, with some purple polka dots on the front um, and it's got a beautiful label on which says Anne made I love that isn't that spectacular and there are also some goodies inside as well so there's a fun notebook under the sea which I just love you know my love of my local beach and being by the sea and are you impressed a couple of weeks down the line I have not yet tucked into these Harry bows. I wanted to share them with you, but I will be gobbling those now I've recorded this. <laughs> There's also a lovely lavender bag with a stitch marker. And the stitch marker is a little carrot, <laughs> which is just brilliant. I love it. And there was also some washi tape in the bag too. And it's a days of the week washi tape, which is super, super useful for my journaling. Just cast on a new sock project. I'm going to be working on a test knit um, throughout the month of May so I think I'm going to use this project bag to house my new sock project perfect timing yes everything that I brought home from Wonderwall purchases gifts and most importantly some happy memories of a wonderful day meeting up with some lovely people despite the sort of slight anxiety and reservations about being back at a show I'm so glad that I was able to go um, and I made myself go because it can be a little bit of a hurdle sometimes can't it um, I now have lots of wonderful memories from that day um, of meeting so many lovely people. I've got some beautiful souvenirs to play with, um, both purchased and gifted, which just, just blows me away. <laughs> I'm already looking forward to next year. Uh, as I say, I hope to spend a little bit more time next year, uh, maybe go both days. So there'll be time for knitting, shopping, chatting, and hopefully a better vlog. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed what there was <laughs> and a little bit of an exploration of some of the things that came home with me. I shall be back again soon um, with some more content here on the channel so I hope you will join me for the next video but until we do get to spend time together again I hope you get to do some of the things that you enjoy. Great big woolly hugs to you all. Bye for now. Bye!